This is a Christmas card that I designed in 1995 using the Persistence of Vision Ray Tracer or Proof Ray. The angel was inspired by the logo for St. Gabriel Catholic Church where I attend. Click on the link to see how I created the 3D rendered version using Proof Ray. I always wondered what the angel figures would look like if they ever existed for real. About a year ago, I bought a 3D printer and I thought that perhaps that would be the opportunity to create the objects in real life. Unfortunately, Proof Ray doesn't have the ability to export its files in the proper format. Most component objects in the Angel model could be rendered using a regular CAD program that supports 3D printing. But the unique shape of the arms is hard to model in a standard CAD program. 3D printer software requires objects defined by a triangle mesh, while Prouvray uses a mathematical formula to define a surface. Prouvray has a built-in function in its scene description language that allows you to fire a ray at your object and determine the point where the ray intersects it. We can use that information to output a set of XYZ coordinates to a text file. That text file can then be used by other programs to create a triangle mesh. This animation shows how we scan the object using the trace function. We're scanning from the front in rows and columns in one half unit increments. Sometimes the rays miss, but when they hit, we record the XYZ coordinate. We output the data using a proof ray debug statement. We redirect the debug output to a text file. That text file is then imported into another program to convert it into a mesh. The trace function only records the first hit of each ray. As you can see, only the front side gets sampled. If we sample both the front and the back, we miss the interior. Increasing the resolution of the scan doesn't help. Scanning from the right and left is no better. Let's try a radial pattern. We create circular rays fired from the outside towards the center and scanning upwards row by row. As you can see, this gives a much more even looking pattern. As you might expect, scanning from the outside in completely misses the interior. We can also do a radial pattern from the inside out. After combining the inward and outward radial patterns, we get good coverage, but we miss the top and bottom. Why not use the benefits of all of them? Let's scan from all sides, inside out, upside down, every direction. As you notice, this leaves some clusters of dots. Those clusters can cause problems later on when we try to convert them to triangles. Some of the triangles come out too small, or they come out degenerate, where the corners meet one another. Our mesh conversion program will allow us to combine those dots together to get a more uniform pattern. For purposes of illustration, we use 0.1 grid spacing and 4 degrees radial spacing. When we created our dots for actual 3D printing, we used grid spacing of 0.1 and radial spacing of 
one degree. Now we will import that data into a free program called MeshLab. We click on File, Import Mesh, and we call up the ASCII text file that contains our XYZ data. Use the default settings, and there's our mesh. Next, we will apply a filter called a cluster decimation filter. It will group our dots together into tiny cells. Put a spacing of 0 0.1. Any points that are closer together than 0 0.1 will be combined into a single point. Click on Apply, and then close the dialog box. Next, we apply another filter to compute the normals for each of the vertices. We go into the Filter menu again, and this time under Normals, we find Compute Normals from Points set. We'll use the default settings on this dialog as well. Click on Apply and close the dialog box. Now we will actually create the mesh. Click on Filter, Remeshing and Reconstruction, and then we use Surface Reconstruction using Poisson method. It's near the bottom of the list. I'm going to be honest, I really don't know what these values exactly do. We played around with different values until we got ones that gave good results. I put in 8, 8, and 2 in the first three boxes. Then I click on Apply and close the window. You will notice that when it creates the mesh, the faces are very dark. This is an indication that the surface normals are backwards. So we'll use another method to reverse the surface normals. We go into the normals menu and then we flip the normals Make sure that the flip, the force flip is checked, and then click on Apply and Close. You will notice that the normals turn light. That means they're facing the proper direction. Now we will actually export this mesh into an STL file that can be later imported into a CAD program and eventually 3D printed. Click on File, Export Mesh. We give it a file name of ARMS. We select the file type of STL files. And then we click OK. Now we will import the file into Blender 3D, our CAD program. We start by deleting the default cube that comes up when you open Blender. Then we go to the File menu, and near the bottom, we click on Import. Under Import, the second from the bottom is STL file. There's our STL file that we created from MeshLab, and we import it into Blender. The orientation is going to be different than we had with Poovray, because Poovray uses a different coordinate system than most CAD programs. Poovray has the z-axis pointing towards you out of the screen with y-axis pointing upwards. Most CAD programs have the y-axis pointing away from you and the z-axis pointing upwards. But as we rotate the object around, we can see it's the familiar shape that we were looking for. 
We needed the 0 0.1 resolution for the sharp edges and tight radius curves. But if you look at the sides of the model in edit mode here, you can see that there are thousands and thousands of vertices that aren't really necessary. In edit mode, switch from vertex mode to face mode. Press the A key twice to make sure that all of the faces are selected. And then hit the delete key to do a limited dissolve and try to eliminate some of those unnecessary triangles. Unfortunately, that gives us a very blotchy looking surface. We no longer have triangles. We have bizarre shaped ingons. It retained the curves around the edges, but the smooth surfaces look terrible. We're going to go back into edit mode and undo that and use a different way of decimating the triangles. This time we're going to use an object modifier. On the lower right corner of the screen, click on Add Modifier, and then we go down to Decimate. We'll drag our window open a little bit further so we can see what we're doing. Under the decimate panel, it says ratio. This is the ratio of triangles that we want to have left when we eliminate some of them. We're going to try 0 0.2. That means we should have 20% of the triangles that we had before. Before applying the modifier, be sure to check the triangulate box in the lower right. That ensures we get nice triangles instead of those bizarre shapes. Now we apply the filter, or the modifier, rather, and then we will go back into edit mode and see what we've got. As we zoom in, we can see that we've eliminated some of the triangles, but we still have a nice smooth shape. You can play around with that percentage value and perhaps apply the modifier multiple times to trade off number of triangles versus quality. The body shape was modeled using Blender 3D CAD software directly. I did not import it from a mesh. Here I added the arms to the body. The mesh import went so easily with the arms that I decided to go ahead and use the same system for the wings shown here, or also for the hair, and for the face, as well as the trumpet. Here's the final product, 3D printed. We printed the trumpet separately, but the rest of the model was printed in a single piece. After that test print, I built a larger one, this time to be printed in different kinds of plastic. The body has holes cut into it for the wings. The wings were printed in a semi-transparent plastic. We used brown plastic for the hair but I did not have any flesh colored plastic for the face. We painted the face flesh colored using paint. Also, the trumpet was printed in orange and then covered with a gold glitter paint. Visit my blog for more information about this project.